Check, please. Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Money. In this video, we are gonna walk you through a real and actual real estate deal here in Ohio. I bring you Paul's mentor, his lover, his partner, <laughs> Andrew Striegel is back on the show. Welcome, Andrew. That's for quite the introduction there. Deal of the week. Let me bring it to you. Let me bring it to home, folks. What we're going to do in this video is walk through an actual property. You will look at the square footage, what they're asking, the rent rolls. You will get a, a, an expert opinion from a guy. Andrew, you look at deals and have been for how many years? I want to set your credentials very straight for our listeners at home. I appreciate that. So, I mean... Paul and I, as far as owning and looking at deals, I think he bought a building even before me, but um, before I was involved, I mean, he started buying in 2003. Mm -hmm. You know, I probably got a couple years after as far as working directly with Paul and partnering up with him. But in that gap in between, I was also working with a couple other guys in a startup brokerage in the area selling apartment buildings. So, I mean, I was looking at apartment buildings every single day. So you go all the way down from single units to three, four, five hundred unit, multi gajillion dollar, million dollar deals. Yep. You you look at them all. We'll look at them all. And so, and Andrew is the guy that you also have the ability to assess what's wrong with the property, what can be made right with the property, how to increase rent rolls, pur purchasing, buying, all this stuff. You you know all this stuff. And again, it's an art. That's the one big thing that I want to make clear. It's not a definitive, this is the only way to do it. It's an art. There's certain ways and practices that we've gotten used to how we approach a real estate deal. So everything's going to be slightly different, but I'm going to walk through some of our steps and how we look at deals. Great. And we get tons of requests from our community, the Everything Money community say, guys, why don't you do some more real estate? Here you go. If you're out there, you want to get into real estate and you're new to this, maybe someone like me buying your first property. I've Andrew has assisted me in helping this. There's a lot that goes into us and we walk you through the path right now. So Andrew, the, our first deal this week, we've covered up a lot of the information, but this is out of Cleveland. It's an old building, a 19, uh, 19, built in 1915. You said it's a nine unit. Give Correct. me some of the stats and, and figures that go along with this building. This is right in someone's wheelhouse, maybe for a new uh, real estate investor, someone like myself. Go ahead. Right. Again, and this is just for learning purposes. If people are going to encompass or, or find this building anywhere in the country, pretty much. Now, are there nuances to what makes Cleveland different than Atlanta or Texas or wherever? Of course. There's a lot of things that are going to be different market to market to market. So some of those things are going to change, but we're going to highlight some of the things that might affect a real estate deal here in Cleveland. So nine unit building, this happens to be in Cleveland Heights. It's a, a nice suburb on the east side of Cleveland that uh, has a chunk of renters and a chunk of homeowners. So um, a lot of different parts to Cleveland Heights. Uh, this, I like the area. We actually own a single family or a duplex rather on this street. Same so, street. I like the street. So location, and, and, and a lot of people say location, location. There's a big argument. Like uh, Paul is very much not so much about locations, but I mean, is that how how much of a does the location weigh in on your mind when selecting properties? So, if I'm going in to rehab a property, and I'm going to put, we get into all of the details of why I say certain numbers, but ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, whatever I'm going to put into the building, I need to get back in a rental increase bump. So if I'm putting in 20 grand to go get $150 a month extra in rent, I need to make sure that the property can support going from, we'll make a number up, 800 to 950 a thousand. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put in 20 grand to only sit there and get a $50 rent bump. Now I'm losing money. I see. And we're going to go through everything in Real Estate Calculator, which is an add-on for all of our Everything Money subscribers. Yes. Uh, something that we're looking to bring. Is that correct? Absolutely. It's in, it's in the cooks. Yeah. So we're going to go through this property, look at all the numbers. We're very numbers based and we will sort of tease you with what's coming to our community members, which is the real estate calculator. Andrew has sort of the, um, the intro version of this, and we're going to make this as part of the, the software moving forward probably this year. So all right, I, I interrupted you and let's keep going on this place. So you have, so, go ahead. Yeah. Looking at this again, there's what you're seeing here. This is a, um, you have seen a lot of different cities. Some people find deals on whether it's Facebook, uh, they'll find deals through real estate agents, friends, whatever it is. This is a property that's literally actively listed right now on the Cleveland MLS. Um, you can see it's a really nice, look, it's a brick building, nine units, it's very clean, but there's some other things that come along with it. Again, some of the people not as familiar with Cleveland, Ohio, are gonna sit here and get shocked at this one. This is a monster one. We'll get into this in a second. There's a whole thing about real estate taxes, but 
You see the tax on that? Yeah, 20 grand, almost 21. 20 grand. That's a lot? It's going to go up. Oh, right. It's going to get even higher. After this is sold. Correct. So we'll get to that in a second. But Okay, what are the first steps you look at when this comes across to a normal person like me, whether it's a wholesaler, Craigslist, Facebook? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are the first steps you look at in terms of analyzing this property? So I'm going to sit here and look at... Um, one, how many units do I have? I'm going to look at what's the current rent. I'm going to sit there and see uh, what do the units look like? How much can I upgrade the unit? Does it already have stainless steel? Does it have the bathrooms done? Does it have the kitchens done? All that type of stuff. So do what you, can I do to improve the property and get the rent that I want to do? Or, by the way, if it's nothing, that's fine. Some people are buying because they want to improve and they got a lot of time to put in. Others say, I want real estate in my life. I want a part of my portfolio. I don't have the time for that. I'm going to get a property manager. Mm-hmm. I have someone come in and take care of it for me. And I don't want all that heavy lifting. I want more of a coupon. I want something that I can put some money in and have a little less responsibility. So real estate, I think, allows you to kind of choose your involvement level, which is nice. Yep. And with that, you're also choosing your return level. So you can pay yourself to do some of that stuff or you can pay someone else to do it. It's all going to affect your returns. But it's comfort level on how much money do you want to put in to diversify your portfolio and get a return for that. So, yeah, I'm going to look at items when it comes to expenses. This one, you can see hot water steam. That means this building is a boiler building. All the heat is, is that a boiler. Good or, is it good or bad? It's old. Neither. Or. It is an older way, older buildings. And you can see, again, we talked about this being an older building. Mm-hmm. Um, typically speaking, what that means, if, if a unit has an individual furnace, the tenant tends, ah, not always, I know where to going. pay their own bill. Right. When it's a boiler, this is one giant boiler that heats the entire building, goes to all the individual units, which means, typically speaking, the owner pays the bill. Yep. And gas bills are big. And when you get to winter and all that kind of stuff, misuse, we go back up. I mean, you're looking at the building. What if your tenant sitting here in uh, the top unit goes, man, it's hot. So they open all their windows up and jack the heat even higher. Right. All your money is just flowing right out the window. So there's things that we can do to talk about that. That gets more in the management side, but... We're doing high-level analysis here. Okay. So let's jump in a little bit to Real Estate Calculator. All right. So Real Estate Calculator, again, you can put tons of information in here. We're going to walk through page by page. In this one, we're looking at the general page of the property. What's the property name? What's the address? You can see I left it out here. Sorry. Um, City, state, contact role. Did you get it from a broker? Who they are? It helps you organize everything. Same point down here. So you can filter everything by state, broker, et cetera. So you can look at all your information a little bit quicker. But going into the details, now we're going to sit here and look at... Oh, we're getting juicy now. Yeah, I know. that Seth, this is it. How many units do we have? What's my annual appreciation going to be? This is what I'm saying as far as the art of the program. You could sit there and say, you know what? I don't believe that. I'm going to do my... I'm going to be a little more conservative. I think appreciation is going to be two. Um, you can use your own numbers to see where they're going to be. Obviously, sure. appreciation is going to depend on what market you're in as well vacancy. So let me say this is a higher one. Now I went a little bit higher. Banks, you'll see a lot of banks sit there do seven to eight. Uh-huh. If you're in New York City, you're going to see them do five. This is rent controlled. Everyone needs an apartment. And everything's full and stuff like that. But I'm looking at a couple different things. One, you're going to have natural turnover every single year, right? Vacancies happen. Yep. The other thing that's going to happen, unfortunately, is this vacancy is financial vacancy. When you have an eviction, you're going to lose the money that someone owes you. You're not going to possibly be able to collect every single dollar while they were in there. So not only do you have the time to turn the unit, release the unit, but you have the financial loss before then. So if we're looking at three, four months of whatever that takes, and the fact that you're only nine units, not 90 or 300, yeah. that one unit in really? terms of 100% makes a big difference. Okay, keep going. So purchase price. That's it. That's the ask price right now. Nine units. So you're looking at over $100,000 a door. Jesus. You know, you know, earlier this Why year. Why did you say that? Well, I was looking at one in Akron. It was an eight unit and it was mm-hmm. 179 nine was the ask. That's a lot lower. Than, a, than nine. Obviously. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> what else do you look at? Keep going. Is that a, is that a smart comment? <laughs> Thank you, Andrew, for adding that, that, that killer uh, comment. I know. You. Keep going. Years of analysis. Help me do that. <laughs> Uh, cost to sell. This is something that most people ignore. I would. This is even lower. There's a lot of reasons I can get in, which will show you 
why I want to increase this. Again, this is a shorter video, so I'm not going to get into all that detail right now, but cost to sell. You're going to put in all this work five years from now, 10 years from now. Your property is not going to be worth the same amount at 950, right? You want yeah. it to be worth more. Are you going to hire an agent? Probably. Okay, so you're going to hire an agent. What's that cost you? I don't know. Let's say it's 4 to 6%. Right, that's right. Right? So you have a cost to get out of it. Uh-oh. So when we're sitting there and saying this property is worth, I'll make a number up, $1.4 million down the road, mm-hmm. you have a commission. So that's going to be taken out. We need to bring that into account when we're looking at our um, uh, recap of the entire investment. Okay, keep going. Analysis. How long am I looking at? Three years? Am I trying to get in and out quick? Is it 10 years? Is it a longer hold? Cap rate. This is a whole nerd thing. Oh, boy. We can get in cap rate. I know. A lot of people say, what's the cap rate? Do you yes. remember? We did this a long time ago when we were doing the original real estate stuff. Do you remember what a cap rate is? <laughs> no. It's okay. If you paid cash for the property, if you paid 950000 for this, mm-hmm. your income, which we'll get to in a second, less your expenses, right? We're looking at your net income, your cash flow, right? Before yeah. interest, before depreciation, all that kind of stuff, right? That is your... Cash flow, divide that into the purchase price. That's cap rate. This is my rate of return after I pay for it. Yeah, this is the return you're going to get on the deal. Per year. Correct. That's what we're looking at. That seems low. To hit this number. That seems low. Right now, I mean, low in comparison to what? Investing into just a general stock, SPY, looking at 9 to 10% per year. Fair enough. What this doesn't do is use leverage. It's one of the best parts about real estate. It's why everyone wants in, right? Oh, because when you buy $100,000 worth of stock on day X, how much is your stock work worth one second later? The same. You're buying 100000 for 100000 right? Yes. Now, I know there's a lot of different instruments so you can go in and margin and stuff like that. But essentially, every single real estate deal has the opportunity for that. Why? You're taking that 100000 and using it as, let's say, a 20% down payment to go buy a $500,000 ah, building. I see. You're right. So you're using that leverage and you're using the cost of debt, which right now is very cheap. I see. So you buy this. And it increases the return I because see. of the cost of debt. You're using someone else's money to make a spread over that. You're going to end up with a better return. Okay, keep going. So um, acquisition fee, if you're using investors, this is something you can put in. Maybe you owe your investor 1% right off the dribble. Financing fee, you're going to owe the bank if you're going in and doing something. This time, see this, we'll refinance and we'll rehab. Yeah. Those are options if we're going to go in and obviously rehab and borrow money from a bank to go do it. Now, in the sense of, let me see here. Whoop, looking a lot of stuff here. If I show you pictures from the inside, Here's some pictures of the inside. Yeah, I saw zoom, this right off the crack. In. Yeah, so um, right off the, right, yeah, look so at I this. So I can show. So these so are you're super looking at nice. Hardwood floors, right? Mm-hmm. New tile, backsplash. The kitchen, stainless steel. It's nice. That's nice ceramic tile, undermount sink. It's pretty nice. They've got laundry unit in it. The bathrooms you can see have redone. Now, different taste. Someone put something different in, of course. Fine. But. So someone put it's a nice put, unit. Yeah, someone already put a zillion dollars in this. Do Correct. I, someone already put it in. That's why when we're looking at real estate calculator, let me go back to that page. You see, I did not click on these because it's done. Okay. Now, when you go in, maybe change your mind. want to put some money in. But for that five-second napkin review that we're going to do, not clicked. Okay, keep going. All right, income. I've got seven two-bedroom units, 950 square feet. That's their current rent. That's what we're getting, 1550 um, we've got a rent roll. We can see all kinds of deposits. Rent roll is just a quick statement of every single unit that's in the building and what they're paying, how many beds, baths, where they're getting the money, if they're behind in rent, stuff like that. Yeah. So you showed this to me like a very detailed, this is rare in some of our yep. past deals. This is a very detailed rent roll of who, what, what they're coming in, what they're paying and all that. So correct. Okay. So keep going. So I've got two one beds here and you can see I've got different rents over here, 875, 850. And if I was rehabbing, this is where I'd sit there and push it, push it up. And I may sit there and say, hey, look, current rent's 875. All I got to do is roll the tenants over, and I think maybe I can get 900. Evict the current tenants, raise the price. Uh, and even if it's not eviction, it might just be a tenant turn, right? Everyone's lease is up every 12 months, typically okay. speaking. So sometime in the next year, all nine of these units will probably come up for a release somewhere along the line. And that's where you can sit there. Can this move up? 
Can the 875 move up? We already know 850 can move up if this is at 875, right? Okay. So there are things that we can bring into play here to sit and alter the value of the property. Okay, keep going. Parking. Charge parking for, in this city, charge valuable. Parking. Yeah. There's only so many spots. It's nice to have parking. People love parking. You can sit there and make a couple bucks. That is not a lot of parking. That's actually a negative when we're looking at the building because I got nine people, seven two beds, which possibly means that's 14 cars right there plus two one beds. I'm at 16 cars. The fact that I only have $1,150 in parking from according to the owner, I'm a little worried about my off-street parking. It's a detriment to the property. If okay. you have two people coming in, they want to park two cars. So, Okay, keep going. Here's the fun part. Cleveland Heights. Look at that tax rate. That is a beast. 5.06%. Monster. But what we're doing here is we're sitting there allowing the uh, real estate calculator to adjust Every single time the value of the property goes up or when we're altering things with different numbers, they're always going to sit there and move this as a percentage of the overall price. So okay. as we're playing around with the price, it's going to automatically alter and change all the numbers for you. So this is the tax you get from the county, but this, these taxes will obviously go up when this in, in this heightened real estate market when this thing sells for nine fifty dollars or, or even above, uh, your taxes will be reset. You'll be paying a lot more, right? Bingo. And this is not always... They may be sitting there right now, and I get the exact number, but they may have a valuation of about 600 from the county. In that case, taxes are going up 50%. Because if you buy it at 900, oh. 950... So the, old, the taxes we taxes said earlier... Taxes are going to go up. Yeah, so the taxes were almost 21K, but if this... Meaning on a, on, a, on a building valued at 600, but if this sells for 950 now, this 21 could go to 30-something. 40-something. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. okay. I know. Okay, keep going. Uh, same thing here. These are things we were talking about before, Seth. We were talking about what do you want? It's a nine-unit building. Is this something you might be able to do on the side? When I say you, everyone, anyone who's looking at real estate, of course, you might be able to manage it. Mm -hmm. Do you have to pay someone? Yeah, honestly, if you're paying someone, they're probably going to charge you 7 to 8%, and that's of your collected income. Mm -hmm. So whatever your property manager collects, they're going to take 78% right off the top. They're also going to sit there and take a certain amount, and this could go all the way up to one month. One month rent as far as leasing commission goes. These are the negotiated items. In this case, I put different plugs in as numbers. Let's say maybe, Seth, you were doing it yourself, mm -hmm. where you're paying yourself the time to at least answer the phone, drive out there, and do something. So you make a couple bucks every time you sit there and rent it. My management fee, there's something but less than if you paid someone else. Again, these are the numbers you sit and change when you're sitting there and analyzing and saying, do I want the property? Insurance. The more you sit there and get involved, you'll figure out what types of buildings go for about how much when you start quoting. Mm -hmm. That's just a feel and you'll figure it out over time. Now, there's a lot of things that are kind of buried when I'm talking about these numbers. Oh, boy. $800. Per is that unit? high? Per yes. Unit? That's $800. When... Sorry, when you see this, this means flat in our oh, program. Okay. And when I click this button, I'm moving it over and I'm saying per unit now. Okay. So, good question. 600 of this is probably sitting at actual maintenance repair. What does it cost me to paint units and fix units and light bulbs and all that kind of stuff inside the building every single year? I've also got interior hallways and unit turnovers that I have to clean. So... That's going to be about 150, 200 bucks per unit on that. So all in, I'm about 800. CapEx. This is the stuff, the rainy day stuff. Your roof, the That's carpet right. in the hallway, landscaping out front. Maybe it's windows. We talked about a boiler already. Yep. A boiler is could be twenty five thousand dollars if you got to go replace the whole thing. Oh boy. You could be sitting there and doing repairs for five grand, whatever it is. But this is the money you're stacking away for that. More importantly. When you're looking at deals, this is something that most sellers never put in for the buyer. Uh-huh. And if we sit there and look at the numbers, we've got all this paper in front. You've got some, I got some, right? Mm -hmm. We won't find this number in any of their stuff. This is something that we never, I should say, we hardly see a seller include this because it's going to decrease the value of their building. But do we need to stack away money? 
Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Also, if we go get financing, the bank is going to require that we have this put in. So it's in. It has to be in. Okay. Again, could someone leave it out? Yes, but you're doing yourself an injustice because you're giving the seller more money than they deserve because you have to eventually fix these items. You own it for 10 years, which we started and said we would. I'm going to have these items. I'm going to end up using that money. Advertising, I got to lease it, some accounting money. It's a little bit of grass in front. Let's say it's 30 cuts a year. Divide that out. Snow plowing because Cleveland, Ohio gets snow. Gas, $500 per unit. That's covering the boiler expense. This seems like a very exact number. Where'd we get that? The seller gave us their QuickBooks file for the last couple of years. Yep, I see it. So we're using that number to sit and focus on and say, what are the costs here? Water sewer, same thing. This is an exact number from their QuickBooks. And miscellaneous goes into some of the numbers that they've also included. So now, are there some gaps? Let me see here. Oct permits, not included by the seller. What's that mean? This city charges... Let's say it's $150 um, per year per unit in order to rent something out in that city, not on the seller's financial stuff. Oh, so they just... But you have to do it. In this city, you have to buy it every single year. So if you haven't caught so this... why not underwrite it? Yeah, if you it? haven't caught this, folks, is the sellers don't always have to be this transparent, right? Great point. So when you get into the commercial world, ah. it's very much considered buyer beware. In single family, when you go buy your personal home, the single buyer, him, his wife, her, whatever, you are protected in the sense of, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just a home buyer. And so that's why you're using real estate agents and they're helping you and holding your hand. When you get in the commercial world, they go, if you have this much money to play in this atmosphere, buyer beware. Go get a lawyer, get good help, get good representation, figure it out on your own. All right, keep going. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that they're not going to tell you, and they're not necessarily required to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Do they have to tell you the truth if you ask? Shh. Yes. Okay. All right, keep going. Um, same thing, eviction fees. Based on the information they gave me, one, they didn't call it eviction fees. Why? That looks bad. So they were blending it and calling it professional fees. Ah, I do that too. I would definitely do that if For I was my selling. services, but, yes. Um. Could they put accounting in there, blend it? Could it be some banking fees? And Yes, it could be a bunch of stuff. But looking at their cash flow statement, the ups and downs that they were occurring over six months showed tenants were being evicted because the same tenant that was in there in June wasn't in there in August. It just didn't line up that that many leases were rolling at the exact same time. So they had some evictions. You've got some costs for that. So we're going to keep moving though. Again, we can get in a lot of detail with someone explaining why we're doing things. Mortgage. Again, you can, I don't want to hear, you know, oh, that interest rate's high or it's low or it's all that kind of stuff. This is a plug number. You can put whatever plug you want. For now, this is a 25% down, 3.25% interest rate. Okay. Nice and simple. So where's the IRR? You see all these things that we just put in, right? There's all our data. All the detail, all the data. This is the IRR. Let me see. Internal rate of return that we're getting over a 10 year period, 5.3%. Okay. Are you happy with 5.3? No. I, I think that's pretty low. Like you said, why wouldn't I go in the SP, do some type of track, or put my money somewhere else? Okay. So I was still doing using I, real estate I was calculator. I was going to say, I was still doing IRR versus ROI, which we've had past episodes on that topic as well, which I've already forgot, but keep going. I know. Some hashtag link at the bottom, right? Someone can reference that video. Yes, yes. I'll watch it myself. Keep going. <laughs> so we've installed, for lack of a better term, sliders in here, right? Cap rate. Again, this is something where you can say, oh, I think this is more of a seven cap, seven of quarter, seven and a half. Or, you know what, it's competitive market. I think six caps is reasonable. And you can see how the IRR is. What does it do? Yeah, what does it do when you slide that step to You can right see it moving. Oh, okay. Okay. Can you see it moving? Yeah, I, I, I can I, see I it moving. Now. Yeah. So My bad. That's okay. So, leaving it where we had it, um, same so, thing, current rent, market rent. What if we start moving the number up a little bit, right? Our return will be better. So Correct. Our can I get more than they're getting? Well, of course, if I get higher rent, I'm getting a better return. But that's also an assumption I'm getting higher rent. 
just because I ask for it. This isn't factoring in the fact that I'm putting money into the building yet. This is just saying, man, these guys are just under rented. I know I get a hundred bucks right off the dribble. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go get a hundred. So I'm going to factor that in and you can figure out your return that way. Of course, the main slider you could do is just nice price. Just price. That's it. So if you were going in, what type of return maybe are you looking for? Well, I know Paul is, aren't you guys looking for what type of return are you guys looking for? Good question. It's going to depend on the property. Where is it? This is a nine unit building for us. Again, if it was in Missouri, nine units is far away. We like to manage our own stuff. It's far away for us to sit and try to manage nine units. So I'd have to hire management, all that stuff, which the costs aren't in here. If I was self-managing it and it was near something else, I'd want to honestly be at least 15. Yeah, 15. Give me I was closer to 15. 20 would be yeah. awesome, but at least 15. And there's other things that I think I can do in here to maybe raise some rent. And um, a really easy one I noticed, they're not charging for water. The landlord's paying all the water sewer bill. Yeah. They're currently not charging anything. Can I get $40, $45 extra per month per unit? Yes. Does that go straight to the bottom line then? Absolutely. Okay. So that's a way I can sit there and get a better return to bridge that gap from maybe 15 to closer to 20. So, but, folks, if you're watching at home, this is much like our stock analyzer tool. You you can't get back what you pay for this. Once you pay it, it's gone. Correct. And so we need to fidget with the numbers and find a deal. We need to find a deal that's, or a stock that's right for us at a specific buying price. And at the moment, Andrew, it looks like 950 in terms of our assumptions is not yeah, if I call the agent and go, 100%, this is going for at, ask, or over, all right, good luck to you, mm-hmm. right? It's not for me. It's not going to be my thing. If maybe I'm talking to them and I don't either believe them or I'm just going to put in an offer, see where it goes, or they just say, look, they really got to sell this thing quick. Just bring an offer to the table. So what is it worth to me? Now, obviously, I want to get the best price. Maybe I offer even lower, but where do I start hitting my numbers? When I'm at 855000 up here, Eight fifty five. Mm-hmm. You can see my IRR hits almost sixteen percent. Okay. So now we're getting there, right? So if I sit there and save that, and at the same time I'm going to go back. What did we just talk about? Putting the water in. Yeah. So let's do that. If I'm going in and throwing water, doot, 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 doot. so if I'm going in and adding water as a utility reimbursement. I've got nine units paying, let's say 40 bucks a month times 12 units. I'm about $4,300. If I pull out some vacancy factor that, even if I'm getting 4,000. Mm-hmm. Sit there, save that. And we were at what? 15%, I believe, right? Yeah, a little over. Yeah. 15.9. Where am I at now? 19.2. All I did was charge water. That's it. I oh. just got 4%. Oh, wow. Those are the type of things we look at. So obviously I need to make sure I've got real expenses in there, but going back, this is one where I wasn't going in and rehabbing the whole thing. It looked nice. Yeah. I didn't need to rehab it. So this is one, maybe you want to come in and say, look, I've got a full-time job. I don't need to do all this. I just want to come in. I want to buy some real estate, start getting that return. I want nine people to start paying down a million dollar asset for me and get some return along the way. Now are there depreciation benefits and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Right. Leave that for your tax advisors not getting into that, but 19.2, pretty solid deal. That's at 855. If you sat there and said, look, I'm still comfortable in that 15 zone, I can get up to about 876,000 now. And I'm still getting 16.3 at 876. If I go, you know what, I'm going to do the water. So I'm just going to incorporate it right now. Are you giving the seller something that I feel they don't deserve? Yes. You're giving a little extra money for something that's not there. But if you're looking to sit and stretch and say, oh, I need to get a deal done. I want this. There's other things I think I can do. That's the art side I was talking about. At some point, you need to make your mind up and say, this is where it's worth it to me and not worth it. Don't get caught up in the emotion of the negotiating. Know that there's hundreds of these buildings out there. Coming by every day. Look, they're just out there, right? Real estate's tough right now. Why? We're talking about 16%. Someone else may say, man, I'm happy making 11 if he's making eleven, I mean, real quickly, he can. He's pay. at nine nineteen. He already beat me. Uh huh. I'm out. I'm not interested anymore. He's in. He gets the deal done. 
just depends on what market you're in, who's willing to buy it. And that's it. So is this something you'd be interested in? Is this type of thing you like, Seth? If you're watching at home, um, you may be as baffled as I am of all the things you have to think about when buying a property. And I imagine if some of your friends who have purchased properties in the past, Andrew, and like to be a little cocky and, and, and um, maybe very proud of themselves for doing for, I can't imagine they're analyzing deals like this. I mean, this is, nor do they have the software to do this. No, this is definitely a cool thing. And does the back of napkin type of analysis exist? Of course. We went through a whole slew of stuff. Can you get to an idea of, oh, maybe 855? Can I get near there using an iPhone and a calculator or a napkin? Yes, you can do it very quickly using a bunch of different kind of shortcuts that may get you near there. But this is giving you the comfort of saying, have I looked at everything that I need to look at? Am I missing something that I'm not necessarily accounting for? Am I looking at the cost of selling my building after 10 years? Am I putting that in the value or am I eating that cost when I'm done with the investment? Yep. So there's a lot of things to bring in. This is a detailed look. Sure, you can do it fast. It's a little bit more detailed to make you comfortable. So you can go out and buy a nice asset. And again, this property, 855 if you're going in, 200000 250000 down, and you got yourself a million-dollar building. Yeah. Or in this case, $855,000 building. If this sparks your interest... By joining the Everything Money community below, at some point in the new year, uh, in this in this year, you will get the real estate calculator that will help you come up with these deals. We do have a package. Paul has a, 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 a slot for his Patreon where you can pay Paul $10,000 to sit down and look at this deal. And of course, we've gotten the comments in the past, who would ever pay that? If you're buying a million-dollar deal... You can change a $40 water bill and get 4%. It's worth 10 grand to talk to someone like Andrew, to talk to someone like Paul and make a better decision on a large property like this. Um, Look, it's peace of mind. I have, coming from the brokerage world, man, there are some snakes out there. And I told you, if you don't ask the right questions, you're not going to get the right answers. Oh, yeah, they're going to tell you this is all peaches and cream, baby. You're going to get a huge return. This is a great deal, and everything's going to be wonderful. I've seen some really ugly stuff where some people got burnt for a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Seth, you're right. Someone's going to go, oh, man, 10 grand's a lot. Maybe it's relative. You find out all the information you need on this first deal, and maybe you don't need Paul on the second deal. Yep. Then it's two deals, 5000 a piece, essentially, that you were doing up front. But, look, it's it, if you need that peace of mind, it's a great opportunity. We will be taking your real estate requests moving forward through a community. If you want to have a specific property, we can look at it together here on the show. Andrew, uh, I think we'll definitely be doing more of these. Um, of course, you're just a natural on camera, brutally handsome. Hey, thank you. And that salt and pepper is really coming in. I mean, like a silverback. <laughs> oh, it's coming in. <laughs> like a silverback gorilla. I mean, you were just. Within a year, this is all going to be uh, shiny silver. You are manning the jungle. <laughs> so um, if you're overwhelmed, this is a language and a process you will need to practice. You shouldn't be picking this up after one episode. We will be here for you to coddle you and fondle you all the way to the promised land as you get a hold of your wealth, maintain your investments, and to use our software in our community to chat and do this uh, better. So that's our Seth, take. Let me jump in. I know you hinted at it, but let me say it. Please do. I want to sit there and start doing these deals for people, not just in Cleveland. We're going to pull up a couple in our first couple of episodes where we're getting back into it. They're going to be in the Ohio market because easy access and information for us. I'd love to do a deal wherever you are, Tennessee, Florida, Atlanta, you know, Nevada, whatever. Send it over. We'll put a link in with an email for yeah. everything money. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a specific deal that you want us to look at, send us. I can help uh, uh, work with the contact and whoever's involved to get the information we need to actually do an analysis of it. But send something over. If I contact you, then we'll go through it and use it as uh, an example of one of the episodes. That's our take. Join the community, get the software, and get this com this software that's coming soon. So um, thank you, Andrew, for your insight. And, Thanks, Seth. Um, you totally blew my mind, and I'm sure the viewers at home are wanting more like myself. So see you next video. Take a little thumbs up. Yeah.